pancreas. Today we are going to discuss the pancreas. If you look at the pancreas, pancreas is situated posterior to the body wall. into the peritoneum. It has got four regions or four core parts are there of the pancreas. The first one is called concave process. Pancreas is about 25 cm long, 5 cm wide, and 1 to 2 cm thick, and 150 grams in weight. If you look at the pancreas, the pancreas consists is covered with a connective tissue capsule that divides, that produces or that sends the septa into the pancreas. As a result, the pancreas is divided into lobules. Through these lobules, the blood vessels, nerves enter and, enter and leave the pancreas. The pancreas is a heterocline or mixed gland since it consists of the exocrine portion and the endocrine portion. The exocrine pancreas and the endocrine pancreas. First, we will study the exocrine pancreas. This exocrine pancreas, it is in the form of compound tubulo acinar gland. It produces about 1200 ml of bicarbonate rich fluid per day. About 1200 ml of bicarbonate rich fluid is produced per day by the exocrine pancreas. This exocrine pancreas, it is in the form of the pancreatic acinar that consists of about 40 to 50 acinar cells surrounding the lumen or the central cavity. These acinar cells, they are Pyramidal, they are polar cells. That means they have the basophilic basal region having central, having round nucleus and the apical region is eosinophilic consisting of zymogen granules these zymogen granules they are rich in pancreatic enzymes like pancreatic lipase pancreatic amylase dnas rnas uh, and uh, proteolytic enzymes like trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidase, and elastrich. <clears throat> Second portion, these pancreatic acini, they are either round or oval in shape. The acinar cells that line this particular pancreas, uh, pancreas acini. These acinar cells, they have the receptors for co 
police histokinin. We have receptor for choline cystokinin and acetylcholine on the basal membrane. This acinine they constitute about 85% of the mass of the pancreas. Next point, the duct system of the pancreas. The duct system of exocrine pancreas, it starts with the central lumen of the acinine. From this central lumen, the another duct system arises that is called as the intercalated duct. This intercalated duct is lined with a single layer of cuboidal centroacinar cells. Cuboidal centroacinar cells. Both these intercalated ducts as well as the centroacinar cells, they have a receptor for the hormone that is called as secreting and acetylcholine. Now, multiple intercalated ducts, they join together to produce intralobular ducts. Multiple intralobular ducts, they join together to form interlobular ducts. These multiple interlobular ducts, in turn, they join together to form main pancreatic duct. Duct of Wilson. Wilson and accessory duct of Santorin. This particular pancreatic, main pancreatic duct, it combines with the common bile duct. From before entering into the duodenum, and they release their content into a region that is called the capilla of bladder. Are you getting? We will revise it once again. The, same, the duct system of the pancreas it starts with the central lumen. From this central lumen arises the intercalated duct, which consists of cuboidal centroacinar cells that have secreting receptors on their surface. This intercalated ducts they join together to form interlobular ducts and the interlobular ducts. Multiple interlobular ducts in turn join to form main pancreatic duct of Wilson and the accessory ducts of the Santorin. Now, this main pancreatic duct of Wilson joins to joins with common bile duct to produce uh, the common duct that enters into the or that produces their content into the capilla of water which is situated in the duodenum. Next point that you have to remember that this particular acinar cells that have the cholecystokine receptors kind of receptors which is produced, this particular cholecystokine is produced by DNES cells situated in the duodenum. They release the pancreatic juice which is rich in enzymes that I have already discussed. While the centroacinar cells along with the intercalated duct they produce serous alkaline Bicarbonate rich fluid rich fluid that neutralizes the 
the acidity of charge. This particular secretin is produced by enteroendocrine glands or enteroendocrine cells of the duodenum. Are you getting the cholecystokinin, which is produced by the DNES cells of the duodenum? Under this particular cholecystokinin, the acinar cells they produce the pancreatic fluid which is rich in proenzymes that we have already discussed while under the influence of secretin which is produced by the enteroendocrine cells of the duodenum uh, the serous alkaline bicarbonate rich fluid is produced by the centroacinar cells and the intercalatus and this particular alkaline fluid it neutralizes the acidity of the charge next point this is all about the exocrine pancreas now we will move towards the next point that is the endocrine pancreas. Now, this particular endocrine pancreas is present in the form of about 1 million islets of Langerhans. This particular islets of Langerhans, they are scattered throughout the pancreas. But they are mostly concentrated into the tail region of the pancreas. If you look at the islets of Langerhans, it consists of about 3000 polygonal cells lining the fenestrated capillaries. The islets of Langerhans, it consists of about 5 cell types. The first one are called as alpha cells, second one are beta cells, third one delta cells, fourth one G cells, and the last one is the PP cells. Alpha cells, they constitute about 10 to 15 percent of the islets of Langerhans. Beta cells, they constitute about 70% of the islets of Langerhans. Delta cells, they constitute about 5 to 10% of the islets of Langerhans. While these uh, G cells and the pancreatic polypeptides, they constitute very small amount or 1 to 2% of the islets of Langerhans. The alpha cells, they produce one important hormone that is called as the glucagon. This glucagon, it acts on the hepatocytes of the liver and it has two important functions. The first one, it is responsible for glycogenolysis, that is breakdown of glycogen and gluconeogenesis, that is the synthesis of new glucose from the non carbohydrate precursor. As a result, when glucagon is secreted, especially between the meals, it will result into the increase in blood glucose level. Hence, glucagon is also called as the hyperglycemic factor. In another home, hormone produced by the pancreas, uh, pancreatic islets is the insulin which is produced by the beta cells. This insulin is secreted in the form of pre-pro-insulin which is converted into the pro-insulin and in the latter part insulin is produced. This particular insulin, it chiefly acts on three body parts. The first one is the liver the skeletal muscles and the adipocytes. The insulin is released chief just after the meal and as a result whatever the elevated level of blood glucose level is there it decreases 
and hence the insulin is also called as the hypoglycemic factor. Since whatever the glucose, that is also called as a glucose transporters or glucose permeases, insulin stimulates the sequestration of these glucose permeases from interior of the cell onto the side of the cell surface. As a result, the glucose is taken from uh, the plasma membrane or the extracellular matrix into the cell and it will result into the lowering of the blood glucose level. This delta cell, it produces delta cell produces one important hormone that is called as somatostatin. This somatostatin it acts as both the paracrine as well as the endocrine hormone or factor. The paracrine role involves the inhibition of insulin and glucagon secretion by alpha and beta cells, while the endocrine role involves it reduces the motility of reduces the motility of the alimentary canal and the gallbladder. Next important hormone, which is called as the uh, next important cell of the small islets of pancreas is the G cell. This particular G cell it produces the hormone that is called as the gastrin. This gastrin it performs two important functions. It stimulates the gastric gland to produce the SCL and it increases the motility and emptying of this stuff. And the last cell of the endocrine pancreas is called as a PP cell or that is also called, also called as a uh, this particular PP cells they produce pancreatic polypeptide and this pancreatic polypeptide it inhibits the secretion of exocrine pancreas. Thus, we will sum up.